everybody said amen and amen hallelujah all righty i'm excited so let's uh, take our time with this and let's look at revelation 21 verses 1 through 2 and um, again if uh, if you'd like to take a cd i'll i promise i won't move hallelujah amen so i want you to see this clearly too hallelujah revelation 21 verses 1 and i saw a new heaven john says and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, or the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband, right? So we're going to talk the next service about the new Jerusalem, but let's talk about the earth, right? I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. In other words, made new according to the word of God. And then, of course, we're going to see how, what that really means, new earth and new heaven. We're going to see through scripture and also through, through uh, shadows and types and also what God has done before. But really, this is referring to making the heaven and the earth new again, right? And it refers to a complete restoration, a complete restoration. We're going to talk about that. Now, notice this. Um, I got a question that I want to ask every one of you. <coughs> How many times was the earth uh, destroyed? Uh, it was destroyed, but not annihilated. In other words, uh, it was made new, but not completely annihilated. Number one, we find, uh, in fact, let's just go there. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis 1, and we're going to see there's actually two types, two times. Now, we do see cities been destroyed, like Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, we see uh, lands that have been destroyed in the wars of, in the Bible, but never the whole earth or never the heavens. Now, in Genesis 1, and this is where we've got to receive revelation on this because many still don't understand it. In the beginning, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning. And then it drops down to verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now notice this, if you read that, you would think that 1, 2, and 3 just go right after a pattern. But really, between verses 1 and 2, there is a big gap. Let me read it to you this way. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then the earth at one time was without form and void. See, God never creates something without form and without void. Something had to happen to the earth. And darkness was upon the face of the deep meaning waters. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So understand something. Verse 1, he created it. And then something happened along verse 2 that caused the water to completely cause it to be void. And again, it was not, it was not completely ob obliterated. It was destroyed, right? So now notice this. You can see in the Bible things in fact that was the first time that the, the the earth was made new and then the second time the earth was made new when there was the great flood of of noah's time remember the water rose up in fact let's let's look let's look so that we can get a better understanding go with me to second peter now notice this the earth was destroyed but not annihilated so in other words, the earth was made new, which refers to a complete restoration, right? Um, and so we're going to look at it. Keep in mind, we're going to look at 
not annihilated, but destroyed. If we look at the word destroy, then we think it's completely done away with. All it means was it was destroyed by water. In Noah's time, it was destroyed by water within Genesis 2. So something happened there. And uh, in 2 Peter, the third chapter, verses 10, the third chapter, verses 10, the Bible says this. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this. Verses 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now notice this. The earth also and the works therein shall be destroyed. Now notice this. Let's look at verse 11 now. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversations and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God? Here it is. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. This is truly the end of the age. As, as we know this earth in this heaven that we live in right now. So in the end, the earth will be totally cleansed by fire. The heavens shall also be cleansed by fire. Now let me read it to you from the NLT. And it says this, that same verse, verses 10, but the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief, then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves would disappear in fire and the earth and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. So the heavens will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. So in other words, the judgment is, is of the wickedness that this earth has Remember the time of Noah? Everyone except the family of Noah survived that great flood. And also between Genesis 1 and 2, everyone was destroyed. Everyone was destroyed, right? Now notice this. Go with me to 2 Peter. We're there. Go to the fifth verse, which is the third chapter, the fifth verse. These are little keys and insights that we see that we can overlook. But if we focus on uh, focusing on the 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 the, uh, the word intended of, the, of what we're studying, then we'll see it more clearly. Second Peter, the third chapter, verses five says, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now I'm gonna read, I'm gonna explain that to you. Whereby the world that then was, that's Genesis 1, 2, whereby the world that then was overflowed with water perished. Do you see this? Now let me read it to you from the NLT, which brings it out so beautifully. It says, they deliberately forgot that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command. Remember, he commanded the world to be, or the earth, and brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world, which is in Genesis 2 and 1, between Genesis 2, 1 and 2, which is the gap theory. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. Now, this is not talking about uh, the Noah's time. This is talking about uh, the, the gap theory that we're talking about. And by the same word, the present heavens today and the earth have been stored up of fire they are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed so in other words we see the destruction of the earth with fire we see the heavens melted away with fire and we also see the ungodly people being destroyed in the lake of fire so all this represents is a, a complete purging a complete annihilation of of the people uh no let me let me go back a destruction of the earth and the heaven and the people, but not an, 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 uh, a complete, uh, I can't even say that word, annihilation. Thank you. 
That's a, twing, a, a tongue twister, right? Because see, people in hell are going to live forever in hell, tormented. And so that's why we have to understand that. So, so what we see here, the earth, that was referred in that verse that we read, it was to the time of Genesis 1 and 2, where it was cleansed with water, and then we find the earth again cleansed with water in Noah's time. So it's quite interesting that w when we, you and I get baptized, we get baptized in water. It's a significant, it signifies our death, burial, and resurrection, which is a cleansing. The same thing that we see here. Now, just for the sake of, of looking at Noah, go with me to Genesis. Genesis is the sixth chapter. That's why when I was studying this, I said, oh man, I can't go to the New Jerusalem. There's so much there. So I'd rather just talk about this before I go into the New Jerusalem. Are y'all okay with that? Uh, I know the announcements were made, but I just had a, I said, oh, I just, I have to stay with this. Genesis, the sixth chapter, quite a few verses we're going to look at, but let's, let's look at it. We're, we're learning here today. Amen. Genesis, the sixth chapter, verses 11 says, the earth also was corrupt. This is talking about Noah's time. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Kind of sounds like today, right? And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. It was corrupt, for the flesh had corrupt his way upon the earth. So flesh, beings, has corrupted the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. Which at that time he's talking about there, but then also we're looking at Futuristic. The earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And then he talks about make thee an ark, right? Now notice this. Look at verses 17 now. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Now go with me to chapter 7 now, verses 10. I'm just picking out main themes that we need to look at. Uh, chapter 7, verse 10. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Do you see that? In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. So water was coming down and water was coming up. This is the same thing that happened uh, with the creation from Genesis 1 and 2 where the water were surrounded, the waters were surrounded and up came the earth. You see what I'm saying? So it was all creation, part of that. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Drop down to verses 17 now. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the water, and the water prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the, and the mountains were covered. So do you see? Do you see what's happening here? God literally is cleansing the whole earth of water. And yet when the water receded, we find, to this day, we find evidence of the flood like the Grand Canyon. We find evidence of, of craters, of mountains that have a ring around them. So, so it, it was destroyed, but not annihilated. Can you say Amen. But notice this, what I saw in Isaiah. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, verses 7. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, notice what, this is, this, is, um, this is powerful. Verse 7 says, For a small moment have I forsaken thee, God is saying, but with great mercies I will gather thee. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Now notice this. For this is, 
For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. What is it? Now there's a little wrath. A moment of wrath. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have swore, sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that, uh, sworn that I would not wrath with thee nor rebuke thee. So we, if we stop there, we would think, well, then that contradicts what, what we're saying here. But notice what he says in verse 10 now. This is where it picks up again. For the mountains shall, be, shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Now I want you to see this now. This is the love of God for the church. This is the love of God for the redeemed. But for the wicked, he's not talking about the wicked here, he's talking about the redeemed. His covenant of peace and completeness. Now notice that word, completeness. And I'm going to read to you the, 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 the Amplified where it talks about completeness. His covenant of peace and completeness will be till the end. Uh, which he's saying, I am the Lord, your Redeemer. So that means the covenant that he agreed with the flood is still promised, but now something else comes that he has to fulfill. But he's still going to keep his covenant with us, a peace, but he's going to do something that he used the word completeness to the, till the end, completeness. In other words, I'm going to complete to what I said through my prophecy. I'm going to complete it. Yes, I love you. I have great mercy. And I'm going to take you home. But I'm going to complete what I have promised. Now notice this. Look what it says in the Amplified. This is powerful. 2 Peter 3.13. The Bible says, but, but we look for a new heavens and a new earth according to his promise. That's what he's talking about, the completeness. In which righteousness upon righteousness, uh, righteousness and freedom from sin and right standing with God is to abide. So in other words, the new heaven is going to fulfill his promise where righteousness will be free from sin and right, and right standing with God will be with God forever, right? And will abide. Amen. Now let's go back. Look at 2 Peter now. So in other words... We've got an interesting thing happening to us. Now, I believe that the earth is going to be cleansed with fire, because we're seeing scripture. Fireball, completely cleansing it. We're in heaven, we're with the Lord. Uh, people have died on earth. Wars have happened on earth. Destruction. Antichrist is destroyed. Satan is already put in in, in, in hell, in the lake of fire. But now he has to make something new so that the new Jerusalem come down. It's, it's almost like, how can he bring something so precious and holy to an earth that's full of sin? Now, if you look at the earth today, the earth is travailing for the return of Christ. Why is the earth travailing? Because the earth, it wasn't meant to carry the sin that's on it. The heavens now, now, the, now we have the moon and, you know, things, planets, everything around the earth is, is just permeating with all kinds of things and sin. It's amazing, right, that God has to make it all, all new but not annihilated, not completely. Uh, some people think, well, you know, the new earth means this earth is destroyed, then a new, new one's formed. No, this earth is cleansed and it's made new. Right? Because God, what he did, he did something from the Garden of Eden so that man can enjoy the earth and fulfill it. So he's going to fulfill that promise like he did from the beginning. Right? We're going to see that at the end of, of our study. Right? Now notice this. 2 Peter, the third chapter, verses 6. Um, notice what it says. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Whereby the world then was being overflowed 
uh, with water perished. World, what does that really mean? World or earth, what does that really mean? Now, you, you know, the world represents the, the planet earth and all life upon it, including all human civilization, right? But notice this. If you look at what he says about earth and world, it's two different things. It's like, for God so loved the earth. He didn't say that. He said, for God so loved the world, right? He didn't say the earth, he said the world. So the world represents something bigger, but the earth is where the population is. That's where, the, that's where it is, right? And so we find in 2 Peter, it's amazing, right? everything's there in 2 Peter, the third chapter, verses 13. The third chapter, verses 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, according to his promise that we just read, look for a new heaven and a new earth. It didn't say world, it said earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. New heaven and earth, where righteousness dwells. Once we look at the new Jerusalem coming, we're going to find out why we're going to be able to walk into something new. We're going to be able to be going in and out of the gates of Jerusalem, enjoying the earth. And something so interesting that I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but Adam and Eve were intended to eat every tree except for the tree of life, right? Uh, and we see that they could have ate every tree. Now, uh, if you go future, the new Jerusalem is going to open up, and now we're going to be able to enjoy life and eat of the tree that has all the healings, the healings of it, right? So things are going to happen. So, so in other words, uh, it's going to be awesome. Our home is our new Jerusalem, but yet we're going to be able to enjoy the new earth, and the new heavens, I notice is the new heavens now is not going to have a sun and a moon because God is going to be our sun, right? God is going to be our light. So that's going to be quite interesting. I, you know, you, you can only imagine how that's going to be. The, the power of the glory of God just radiating all day long. And you're walking in the fullness and the fields of the love of God. And I mean, Jesse DePlan says that uh, it was amazing that the flowers that he would walk by had life. They had life and things are so vibrant, colors that he never saw before on earth is in heaven, things that he never ever thought he would able to see, he saw in heaven. And so those are things that uh, really captivate us, but yet we're not there to understand it, but we can only believe what the Bible says and look forward for new revelation as he brings it to us, right? Can you say amen? Now, go with me to Revelation again where we first started. Hallelujah, amen. Revelation 21 and notice this, um, I want to, let me get my, my, my phone here real quick and uh, look at Revelations 21 and look at verses 1 and I'm going to read it to you from the, um, praise God, I should have had it all ready, amen, oh no, no, that's not it, <laughs> Revelation 21, I'm going to look I'm going to read it from the, the Good News translation. Listen to what it says. Now, verses 1. Just hear me out, okay? Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth disappeared and the sea vanished. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared and ready like a bride dressed to meet her husband. Right? Now, notice this. Now, let's look at what the... Message Bible says, which is quite interesting. It says here, I saw heaven and, and earth new created. Gone, the first heaven, gone, the first earth, gone, the sea. I saw holy Jerusalem new created, descending, resplendent out of heaven as ready for God as a bride for her husband. Right? Now let's just, let, let's just look at uh, the NLT now. Uh, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth from the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. Isn't that exciting? Now, the last one I want to read is the Amplified. Uh, then I saw a new sky, which is heaven and a new earth for the former sky and the former earth hath passed away, vanished. And there no longer existed any sea. 
And I saw the holy city, the New Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, all arrayed like a bride, beautifully and adorned for her husband. So in other words, if you look at this, this is, this is purity coming down to earth. Now, for, for it to come to earth, God has to do something on earth. Now, fire, according to the word of God, always, always purifies, like gold. Whenever, uh, whenever they want to melt gold, what do they do? They put it in a furnace and they heat up. And what do they do? The gold now is melted. And what's the purpose of the gold? To bring out all the dross. So they have pure, pure gold, right? So this is what awaits us. This is what awaits us, right? The New Jerusalem. But it's amazing how this earth is going to completely be uh, destroyed, uh, uh, not annihilated, completely made new. Now, there's a scripture that I want to end with. And it's found in Isaiah 65. Or I read that right. Hallelujah. Let's go, let's go back there. Sometimes I, I get so ahead of myself. Isaiah 55 now. Praise the Lord. Listen to what it says, 65, uh, excuse me, 65. Isaiah 65. Amen. Notice what it says, Isaiah 65, verses 16. He says this. Then he who blessed himself in the earth shall bless himself in God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hid from my eyes. Now notice what it says here. For behold, I create new heaven and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Now get a hold of that. And that means God is completely forgetting everything that happened after the Persian. Everything that happened after the Persian. Now, I, I want you to think about that. This is God that created mankind. Today we live in the day of, of grace and mercy where it's extended. The grace and mercy is extended. Um, this, is the, this is the day of salvation. Today, it's made available for us to, to come and re receive Christ. But that's his mercy and grace. But he knows the day's coming that he has to put an end to all that. Now, I want you to think about that. A God that created the human being all of a sudden has to cause this human being that did not receive his son or salvation to be put into the burning hell. Think about the earth that he once made for mankind to enjoy. Now he has to completely destroy it because it got full of sin. Um, the other day we were going down Hefner Parkway and there was a fire. I mean, about maybe a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, there was a fire. And uh, this Sunday we drove by there and it was all, well, when it burned, it left nothing but the field shard black. And then we pass by it Sunday, and there's grass coming up, beautiful grass, green as can be. What didn't burn is still straw and hay, but was burnt, what was burned is precious green grass coming up. And I, and I immediately thought about this. The earth has to be on fire to completely burn everything in it, everything in it, everything. I mean, everything is going to be burned, everything, everything, everything. Think about it. Why? so that precious life can come back to it the way it was. And you, we're going to see when the New Jerusalem, we're going to see uh, what's going to happen in the New Jerusalem, what, what our walk is going to be there, what our walk is going to be outside, why God did that. Well, it takes us right back to, to the creation of man. It takes us right back. I mean, God is so good that his intention is to have it the way it was supposed to be, that man did, will not give it away like Adam and Eve gave it. And God had to come, God had to send his son Jesus to redeem us, right? So thank God he had to send Jesus so that we can go to, with him while everything else was being prepared. And now, I want you to think about it. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. He says, a mansion for you where the streets are, are, are gold. And uh, there's so much there, but now we're going to understand the, the seriousness of Jerusalem, the houses of Jerusalem, the living quarters inside Jerusalem, and yet the opportunity for us to gather ourselves and, and enjoy 
the preciousness of God. Amen. Did you get something, church? Wasn't that so good? So simple, but yet so powerful, right? Let's go to God. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to you, Father. And Lord, uh, we're so excited. We know that we barely touched such a small piece of this, Lord. There's so much more. But Lord, uh, you know, we, we will understand it even more as days come, as revelation is revealed to us, Lord. But Lord, we're so thankful that we can see now our future, our great future. We can see now the plan that you have for mankind. We can see why you love us so much and how you've intended it to be. And we see how the enemy has come in to destroy this earth. Now we see why people are trying to destroy this earth, trying to destroy this planet, trying to destroy these things, Lord. We understand man trying to build nuclears to, to destroy this planet, Father. But we know one thing, Lord. You're the ultimate one that's going to have your hand upon this earth. You're the one that's going to change everything for the better. And Lord, I'm looking forward. We're looking forward as a church. We're looking forward for this day. And we're excited, Lord, for this day. It's truly a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen, amen. and amen. All right, give the Lord a praise. Amen, hallelujah. God is so good. He's so good. He's so good. Amen.